Okay, in this video, we'll be talking about a CR discharging circuit. A CR discharging circuit is like this. You notice that there is now no more battery. Because just now in the CR charging circuit, you have a battery here. But now since it's discharging, that means that the capacitor is now initially charged so that you don't need a battery anymore okay and then when time equal to zero you close the switch and then Kirchhoff's second law states that inside a closed loop the summation of the potential change should be equal to zero so you know that the potential difference across the capacitor vc should be equal to the potential difference across the resistor vr and then VC equal to Q over C and then VR equal to IR and then during discharging of the capacitor I equal to negative DQ over DT okay just now for the CR charging circuit I equal to DQ DT because you know that the charge is accumulating on the capacitor but now during discharging of the capacitor, I equal to negative dq dt because you know that the charge on the capacitor decreases, okay? Because the capacitor is now discharging. Okay, one more thing that I want to stress is that what do we mean by the current is the change of the charge accumulated on the capacitor, okay? So what do we mean by the current is the rate of change of the charge accumulated on the capacitor? I want to stress this because you do not think that the current can straight away pass through the capacitor because we know that inside the capacitor you have either the air gap or the dielectric which is an electrical insulator so definitely the current cannot straight away pass through the capacitor okay but then we still say this is a current because we know that the charge accumulated on the capacitor is either increasing or decreasing in the charging or discharging circuit okay so you substitute r equal to negative dq dt and then when you see dt and also dq, you know that you are going to do your powerful integration. When time is zero, that means that when the switch is just being closed, the amount of charge on the capacitor is maximum, which is q naught. And then at a time t, which is a variable, the amount of charge remains on the capacitor is q, which is also an unknown amount. And then finally, you can get this formula Q equal to CV, Q not equal to CV not, so that you can get V equal to V not E negative T over CR. And then by differentiating this formula, you can get I equal to I not E to the power of negative T over CR. And then the value of the maximum current is also equal to Q0 over CR, which is what we have done in the last video, okay? Which is the CR charging circuit. Inside the CR charging circuit, the amount of the I0 is equal to this also. Okay, so for the CR discharging circuit, you get these three formulas. Then you can plot them on the graph. After one constant, Q equal to 0.37 Q0, V is equal to 0.37 V0, I is equal to 0.37 I0. Okay, so you know that after one time constant, the I will become this value, okay, after one time constant. Just now you get these three formulas and then on top of this, I want you to 
to show this formula also. Okay, you can use W equal to half CV square or Q square over 2C or half QV. And then by any formulas that you use, you still can prove this formula. Why I want to show you this is that I want to remind you that the rate at which the energy of the capacitor drops is twice that at which the charge or voltage or current drops. That means that, for example, this is T, this is 2T. So you know that this rate is twice of this. Okay? Let's look at a question. When switch S is closed, the charged capacitor C1 is connected to an uncharged capacitor C2. The initial potential difference across C1 is this. Okay, so this diagram shows before S is being closed. And then this diagram shows the circuit after S is closed. Please find the charge on each capacitor after switching on S. Okay, initial charge on C1 is this. Okay, that means that before S is closed, you have total amount of charge like this. And then you notice that there is no battery here. So you can say that the charge is being conserved. That means that you can use the principle of charge conservation here because it is an isolated capacitor. And then after S is closed, you need to find the final charge on C1 and C2 respectively. When you know that C1 is connected in parallel with C2, then you should know that the potential difference across C1 should be equal to potential difference across C2. Okay? And then by using a charge conservation, then you can find the final potential difference across C1 and also the final potential difference across C2. Okay? Because they are the same, okay? Which is 80 volt. Okay? So you know that the potential difference across here is 80 volt. The potential difference across here is also 80 volt. Then finally, you can use Q equal to CV to find the charge on each capacitor after S is closed. Please find the loss in total energy after switch S is closed. Then, in order to find the loss in energy, you just find the difference in between the final energy of the system and also the initial energy of the system. Okay? Then by using this, you can find out there is really some loss in the energy. The energy is probably lost as heat dissipated in the connecting wires. Alright? A capacitor has capacitance 2400 microfarad. It is charged to have a total charge of Q0. It is then allowed to discharge through a resistor of 250 ohm. Determine the time taken for the charge to decrease by 60%. When the charge decreases by 60%, you know that there is now only 40% of charge remaining on the capacitor. So, this is the formula that you have derived for the CR discharging circuit. And then by using this formula, you can find the time taken. The potential difference across a capacitor of 2200 microfarad decreases to 25% of from its initial value in time t when the capacitor is discharged to a resistor of 25 kilo ohm, find the value of T. Okay? This is also the value that this is also the formula that you get for the CR discharging circuit. Okay. A circuit consists of a resistor, a capacitor, a battery, and a switch connected in series. When the switch is closed, the variation of current I with time T is shown. If the EMF of the battery is 10 volt, please find the capacitance of the capacitor. Okay, so this is the value of the maximum current, which is I0. And then you remember the formula for I0, which is equal to V0 over R. And then V0 is equal to EMF of the battery. 
Okay, V0 is the maximum potential difference across the capacitor. E is the EMF of the battery. Okay, by using this formula, you can get the value for R. And then you substitute the value of R inside this formula. When I is equal to 0 0.05 ampere, the time taken is 12.5 seconds. Okay, then finally, you can get the capacitance. Actually, you notice that I underline the word a battery. That means that I know this is a CR charging circuit. Okay, but this video is about the discharging circuit. So why do I put this question into this video? Because the formula for I is the same in both CR charging and CR discharging circuit. And then you also realize that the formula for I0 is also the same for both CR charging and CR discharging circuit, okay? Which is I0 equal to V0 over R, okay? This formula is valid for both charging and discharging circuit, okay? So no matter this is a charging or a discharging circuit, you still are able to get the same answer, okay? Because it uses I graph. Okay, only when E use Q and V graph, then you should differentiate between the two carefully because the answer would differ. But now since E is using I graph, then the answer will be the same. Okay, the variation of current I with time T when a capacitor is discharging through a resistor in a circuit is shown. What is the time constant of the circuit? Okay. After one time constant, then I will become I0 divided by E. What is the value of I0? 10 micro ampere. Okay, so after one time constant, I will become 3.68 micro ampere. Okay, so from using this graph, you know that this is equal to CR, which is equal to tau, which is the time constant. So the time constant is equal to 20 seconds. Remember that the unit for time constant is second. A parallel plate capacitor of surface area 0.24 meter square has plate separation of 0.65 centimeter in free space and potential difference of 0.8 kilo volt. Please determine the charge stored in the capacitor. Okay, first of all, you find the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor. Then only you use Q equal to CV to find the charge stored. The charge capacitor is then discharged through a circuit connected to a resistor of 10 kilo ohm. Please determine the time taken for the charge in the capacitor to decrease to half of its initial value. Okay, so for a discharging circuit, this is the formula that you have learned just now. And then when Q equal to Q0 over 2, the T equal to this seconds. Find also the current after 2 microseconds, okay? Then you use this formula and then you should be able to remember I0 equal to V0 over R. Okay? Because if you do not remember I0 equal to V0 over R, then you are not able to find the value of I0. Then you are not able to solve this question. Okay? The switch S is closed at terminal P so that the capacitor is fully charged. Then it is closed at terminal Q. Okay, this is terminal P, this is terminal Q. Please calculate the time constant of the circuit. Time constant equal to C times R, okay? And then estimate the energy dissipated through the resistor after two seconds. When it is a discharging CR circuit, you use this formula. What is the value for V0? V0 is this one, the EMF of the battery, okay? And then the initial energy of the capacitor is like this, half CV squared, okay? The energy of the capacitor after 2 seconds is this. That means that just now you already found the potential difference across the capacitor after 2 seconds. 
then you can use this value to find the energy of the capacitor after 2 seconds. Okay, so the energy dissipated is equal to the difference in between the energies. A capacitor of capacitance 47 microfarad is fully charged by a battery of 6 volt. The capacitor is then connected to a discharging circuit of a camera flush containing a resistance of 200 kilo ohm. Please determine the time constant. The time constant is equal to C times R. Okay? Calculate the amount of charge remained in the capacitor after 10 seconds. Okay. The value for the maximum charge of the capacitor is equal to CV0. Okay? Then you substitute everything inside, then you can find the charge remaining on the capacitor after how many time. Please state the effect on the power of the camera flush if a smaller value of resistance is used. Okay, just now you know that time constant equal to CR. When R decreases, time constant decreases. What do you mean by CR decreases? Okay, in the last video, we know that when the CR is very small, the Q or V or I in the discharging circuit will decrease faster. When CR is very big, that means that Q or V or Y or I will decrease by a longer time. Okay, so now... If the CR decreases, that means that CR is now very small. So, the Q or V or I will decrease very fast. Okay, so a lot of energy is released in a shorter time. Okay, and then the power is equal to energy over time. When the time is very short, then the power is very huge. Okay, so the power of the camera flush increases. Okay, this is all in the chapter of capacitors. I hope you learned something from these videos. Thank you.